Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at volcanoes and volcanic hazards. So now we're going to move on to the formation of volcanic domes and this is going to correspond to section 6.9 of your textbook. Okay, so we know by now that volcanic domes are associated with felsic lavas and we also know that these felsic lavas are very very sticky so they have a very high viscosity and they are full, absolutely stuffed with volatile so there's lots and lots of dissolved gas in the lava as well. Now the fact that the lava is so viscous, it's so sticky, means that the lava will not be able to flow a very great distance from the vent. And so this means that volcanic domes are often quite small, they're typically only a few hundred meters across and maybe a few hundred meters high. So in terms of the volcanic dome itself, it tends to grow from the inside. So think of a volcanic dome like a balloon. As you add more air to your balloon, you push the outside of the balloon further and further out. And this is exactly what happens with a volcanic dome. So we can see a volcanic dome right here. And in the core of your volcanic dome, you're going to have new lava being injected into the core. The problem is, is because the lava is so viscous, it's so sticky, it can't easily flow out of the volcanic dome. So most of it will get trapped inside the volcanic dome, but the pressure of this new lava getting put in will push the outside of the dome further out. So it'll increase the diameter of the dome every time a new injection of lava comes in. Now, this is achieved by essentially cracking the outside of the dome every time a new, a new injection of lava comes in. And this means that your, uh, your outer edge of your dome will often be very badly broken up. So it will often be what we refer to as brecciated. So there'll be lots and lots of angular pieces of rock which make up the outer edge of your dome. And you can kind of see them here in this image. You can see how grainy it looks here, these are all these pieces of rock along the outer edge of the dome. And you can see, once again in this instance here, you can see just how granular this dome looks here. This is the result of the, the uh, brecciation, the destruction, the breaking up of the rock on the outer edge of the dome. Now, in some cases though, you do actually get lava flows coming out of your dome. You can actually see one right here. So this lighter area here is the result of a lava flow actually exiting the dome. So sometimes they do actually manage to break out. But on the whole, most of the lava that makes up a dome will simply be injected into the middle of the volcano and that's where it will stay. In terms of this picture down here in the bottom left, you can actually see a volcanic dome preserved in a canyon wall. And you can, you can see the curve of the dome itself right there. So it's quite easy to spot. And you can see essentially that what would happen is, is you would have new magma added to the core of your volcanic dome. And as new magma was added to it, it would essentially push the older layers away. And this is how your volcanic dome is going to grow and develop. So as we've discussed, here's our volcanic dome and here's the vent through which the magma, the lava is coming. And we know once again, it's felsic lava, it's going to be extremely sticky. And so this means it cannot flow very, very far from the vent itself. And so once again, most volcanic domes typically are a few hundred meters across and a few hundred meters high. They're quite small by volcano standards. So the fresh pulse of lava comes in, it gets injected into the core of our dome and it pushes the outer layers further out. And in the process, it causes the outer layers to begin to brecciate, to break up. Now you can get some lava working through the uh, brecciated uh, flanks of your dome. So all of this stuff here is broken up rock, broken up volcanic rock. And sometimes your, uh, your lava will be able to push through and it will actually vent out on the sides of the volcano. So sometimes your dome will grow through the addition of rock from lava flows, but that's not the majority of the growth. Most of the growth comes from adding new lava to the interior of the dome. So the domes themselves are rather simple things. They're not particularly complicated, but a lot of volcanic domes have a rather short life. They don't tend to last that long. So why are volcanic domes so commonly destroyed? How does it happen? 
Well, the first thing is, is your volcanic dome is made of essentially a lot of very badly brecciated volcanic rock, okay? So that means it's very granular, and as such, it's not going to be particularly well consolidated. And so this means that your dome will be very prone to collapse. So you can have the side of your dome will literally slide. So think of a small landslide, for instance. And of course, if this landslide is large enough, or if you have several landslides occurring simultaneously, it can obviously do quite significant damage to your volcanic dome. Now, the other way your volcanic dome can get destroyed is due to an explosion. Now, we've discussed that these felsic lavas are very, very volatile rich. They have lots of dissolved gas in the lava. The problem is, is if you imagine a situation where we have lava moving up and it's coming into the core of our volcano, but those gases aren't able to escape. And so we have all of this gas coming out of our lava, but those gases can't escape fast enough. So we have the pressure building up and up and up. And of course, once the pressure gets high enough, it will overcome the strength of the rock and your dome will literally blow itself to pieces. And this is a very common way for your volcanic domes to end. They will often be destroyed in an explosive eruption. So what rocks do we commonly find associated with volcanic domes? Well, arguably the most common rock we find associated with them is obsidian. So if you remember, obsidian forms when we have a felsic lava, which cools very, very quickly. So you're thinking, okay, how does it cool so quickly? Well, think about it. Your felsic lava is going to have a temperature of somewhere in the region of about seven, well, it's about 750 to 850 Celsius. So it's going to be quite hot. And it's going to come into contact with an atmosphere which could have a temperature anywhere between about minus 20 Celsius and 40 Celsius. Now, that's a very big temperature difference, isn't it? You know, the temperature difference between, you know, 750 Celsius and 40 Celsius is 710 Celsius. That's a very, very big difference. And so this very large difference in temperature means that the lava will lose heat to the surrounding atmosphere very, very quickly. And this will lead to your felsic lava crystallizing very, very fast. And in fact, it crystallizes so fast, it doesn't actually have time to form minerals. And instead, we end up with volcanic glass in the form of obsidian. Now, we will also see a lot of volcanic breccias associated with domes. As we've discussed, the dome grows by pushing out the outer layer of the volcanic dome every time a new pulse of magma enters the dome. And so this means the rocks on the outside of our dome are going to get broken up. And you can see pieces of broken up felsic rock here, these kind of creamy yellow chunks. And in between them, we have this slightly pinkish colored uh, rock. This is going to be a, a rhyolite. So this is going to be a lava that's squeezed in between these chunks of uh, brecciated uh, volcanic rock. And as you can see, this lava has cooled down and it's solidified and it's formed this uh, volcanic breccia, which we can see here. We can also form volcanic breccias uh, at volcanic domes due to landslides, and we can also form them as a lava flow, which is exiting the dome, begins to cool, solidify, and break up. So if you imagine you have a lava flow, and the outside of your lava flow starts to cool down and solidify because it's in contact with the atmosphere, so it's losing heat, well, the outside of that lava flow is going to become you know, hard. But the lava flow is still going to want to move, and so the lava flow is going to keep moving forward, and so that means the crispy crust, essentially, of the lava flow is going to break and brecciate, and so you're going to end up, once again, with lots of angular fragments, which will become incorporated into the lava flow, once again, producing a volcanic breccia. The final type of rock which, are commonly, which is commonly associated with volcanic domes is tuff. And the tuff is going to be the result of essentially dome collapse. So it could be landslides or it could be the explosive destruction of the dome. And that's obviously going to create a large amount of ash and dust, which is going to get thrown up. And of course, it's going to settle back out onto the ground and it's going to form a, an ash rich layer, which, of course, we refer to as a tuff. OK, thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good day.